you doing? So happy to be here today uh, for this beautiful webinar that we're going to be showcasing today. I'm glad everybody is um, attending. Can you hear me clearly? Can you see me? Uh, give us a feedback on, like, message us. Let us know that you can hear me properly. You can see me properly and if there's any problems. But give us thumb ups or in the, in the remarks or just say everything's okay. Okay. Perfect. So um, my name is Christy, and as the head trainer of North America for Reflective Cell, we try to arrange these webinars uh, across North America to be able to educate everybody using Reflective Cell. We want people to be uh, using it freely, enjoyably, as it's been around for many years, and you can achieve beautiful results uh, using Reflective Cell tints. But as today's webinar, it'll be on bleaching the blonde brow. So what can we achieve with the blonde paste? Um, if a lot of us are hairdressers, this is a perfect opportunity to start using something that's more safer around the eye area, uh, brows. Now, if you're an esthetician, this is an add-on service for you uh, to use. So it might take a little bit more uh, to get comfortable on how to uh, bleach the brows. But it's a beautiful service that you will see after today's webinar how you will add this on to your services. Um, it's not just used for one thing, it's used for multiple, three reasons. We'll learn why today we can use the um, blonde brow, okay? So what we'll do is we have a beautiful um, PowerPoint presentation, which we will showcase along as I am uh, talking. Uh, and then any questions you feel you want to throw out there, freely throw them out on, type them in, and I can stop, answer them, or they might be answered along the way. But give us any questions you might have, okay? Uh, as we know, brows are a very, very, very uh, impo uh, important aspect to a woman. We know the phrase, the brows can make or break uh, your face. So having good styled brows is very important. Having the right color on your brows to create that total look is important. But also for a mature clientele, what would we do when their brows start to get the coarse gray hairs? So we want to accommodate all types of women, from all type of women from a variety of ages to have that beautiful look and, and enjoy their brows and create that total look for them. Okay, so we're going to start going through this presentation that we have here made out for you to see. Oh, and I just did something. There we go. Okay, so the first slide, everybody can see it okay? Uh, this slide here is talking to us about the benefits of using blonde brow. As I mentioned before, there are three reasons why you would use the blonde brow. And this is the tube, exactly just like your tints. Everybody can see it? Okay. So, first reason you would use the blonde brow is, as it says mentions on the slide, is to lighten untreated brows. Uh, a perfect example, we'll have a model today where we are going to be showcasing that. Somebody comes into the salon or to the spa and their hair has be, is being lightened. For example, myself, my hair is going blonder and blonder, potentially a more platinum blonde. I'm going to have a stark contrast between my brows and my hair. Sometimes, that stark contrast does not accommodate the person's look. It might make them look washed out. It just might not give them that beautiful, altogether look. So we would need to lighten the brows, soften them a little bit, so that they can match the hair, the color of their hair much better, so that blonde, crisp, white blonde hair. So we would cut, the customer would come in, you would sit them down, uh, look at their hair to see what color the blonde is, and you will know how to adjust the timing. There's only three levels that you can lift the hair, the, the lift the hair with the blonde paste. Okay, so you would say five minutes. You might only need to lighten it just enough so that they can walk out and their brow can match their hair. It can be more subtle. As for example, myself, my brows are dark, very dark. My hair is going blonder. I would can leave it on maybe tops 12 minutes and then just walk out because it pops in the color and it looks beautiful with my hair. Okay. Second reason why you would want to use a blonde brow is to lighten before a tint. So if you have black brows, we know with black hair too, when you go to the hairdresser, you can't lift black. So they would have to strip it. 
they use that technology. So same thing with your uh, brows. If I were to come in with some beautiful, like red, 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 bright red hair, crisp red hair, but my brows are so black, that contrast might be too harsh for my look or for at first anybody's look. You would need to lighten first. So you need to strip away the black brows five minutes. The longer you leave the, the tint on, the more brighter the color that you deposit will be. So if I wanted to get that crisp red, red color, I can leave it on for 12 to 20 minutes and then wipe it off and then deposit the red color on its own. And they can achieve that crisp red color to match their hair as well. So that's the second reason. The third reason would be to be able to tint gray, white, bristly brows. So our tints do work, they do cover gray hair, but as soon as the gray hair becomes that wire, that extreme like coarse, coarse, coarse gray hair, where it feels like a wire, it the, the tint will not grasp it. You'll be tinting all the rest of the hair that doesn't have that gray, but that still stays gray. So what you would have to do is you would have to, the technology that the hairdressers use is pre-soften. You have to pre-soften the hair and then only five minutes. You don't need to leave the blonde paste on there very long, only five minutes. And then you have opened up the, the, the hair follicle where to deposit the color that you want now. And now you will have a uniform colored brow where the pigment has grasped into the gray hair. So those three reasons are why you would want to bring in the blonde paste so that you can be able to accommodate these three types of clientele that will come in um, for a service to give them that total look. Okay, any questions so far? Or those three points are straightforward. So what we'll do is we'll move to the next slide. Did you know some hairdress, hairstylists use bleaching paste for their hair to bleach the brows? Clients may show redness on the skin because the formulation is too harsh. Blonde brow has been specifically formulated for the brows, no redness. So we are trying to help dressers to avoid using whatever's left over in their bowl and applying it onto the brows. It is not unfortunately a safe method. More and more hairstylists are understanding this and have transitioned over to using Refectosil in order to be safer on their customers, because that is your priority. You don't want your customers to have any reaction and you want your customers to leave happy uh, with their service. So when you use our blonde paste and our tints too, they were specifically designed to be used on the hair on the face with the appropriate uh, level of peroxide, okay? Anything higher, as for example, if in their bleaching bowl, when they're bleaching your hair, your peroxide could be a 20 volume, a 30 volume, depending how much uh, blonder you want to go. That is way too harsh for your skin on your face. Redness will occur. Um, itchiness in the eyes will occur. Uh, tearing of the eyes will occur. occur. So your, com your customer is not going to be comfortable and potential harm could happen to their eye area. You're working so close to the eye area. So please, 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 if you're a hairstylist, stay away from using what's in the bowls of your hair dye and start using Refectosil colors and blonde brown. Okay. Uh, now we're going to go to each section, the three sections, the three type of uh, reasons why you would use the blonde, uh, blonde brow. So, oh, yeah. Oh, can everybody hear me? I believe we were, we have lost internet. Can everybody let me know if they can hear me? I was just informed that we lost internet in our office here. So if everybody can see me and hear me, just please. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, perfect. Thank you. Sorry about that. Um, <laughs> I think we got a generator attached to her computer because it's working. <laughs> awesome. That's good. Okay. <laughs> so we're going to go to our, our step number one, okay? To lighten brows to match a new lighter look, okay? So, so as we look at the slide, the first use of on brow is to lighten the brows up to three shades. Remember, only three shades. Uh, if you look at the tip box down there, it says blonde brow keeps on pleaching until it's removed. So 
the peroxide still keeps on working with the blonde brow. It doesn't stop. So that can become potentially dangerous for the hairs. You, they could be damaged. So always know that 20 minutes is the max. We do not want to go anything more than that, okay, in order that we do not damage the hairs on their brows. This is, a perf this is perfect for those customers who, got a, who have a lighter hair color and need their brows to match this new color. If you look at the little chart of the timing, this will help you to know the timing of each level, okay? So for example, your level number one, your lightning by one shade will be five minutes. Your level number two, your lightning by two shades will be 12 minutes. Your level number three to uh, lighten by three shades, that will be 20 minutes, okay? So that chart, the timing helps you to know. And as we mentioned, when you are trying to pre-soften that gray hair, you're going to stay in your criteria of five minutes only. You just want to break down that um, hair, fault, uh, sorry, that hair uh, root, like you just want to break the bonds in the, in the gray hair so that you can deposit the color, okay? And five minutes is enough time. Okay, so let's go to our, did you know? Makeup artists love blonde brows because they can reshape or fill color on brows to client's liking and it will show. So for example, if, as you see in the picture, somebody wanted a more defined brow, um, you could bleach the hairs in the brow so that the artist afterwards is able to draw in a brow, can make it thicker, can make it look, and without having too much of a contrast of the areas that there's more hair, less hair. So when you bleach it, it gives them a nice clean canvas and they could redesign um, uh, a brow. So if you're working with a lot of makeup artists, this service will accommodate them uh, if they're having a model come in uh, that has to do a photo shoot or something like that. Bleaching out the brows can be another option to help out your makeup artist. Okay. <clears throat> Step number two. Lighten brows before a tint. So the step number one, everybody understands what it means just to lighten, just no depositing of color. You just want to lighten the brows, match the hair color, like for myself. I would leave my the bleach, the blonde paste on my brows for about no more than 12 minutes, and I can just walk out and it's matching with my hair. So everybody understands that concept. Pretty simple. Okay. Uh, step number two is to lighten brows before a tint, okay? So this is where it becomes, not hard, but just know how to know which timings to use. So there are two reasons as to why you would bleach before a tint. Number one, it is impossible to color with a tint that is lighter than the natural brow color, unless they've been bleached with blonde brow first. So as we mentioned, if you have brows that are black, or darker brown, it's hard to lift those type of um, uh, colors and by just depositing a color on them. You can't, you won't see that contrast. For, my, for example, myself, if I wanted to deposit light brown on my brows, you wouldn't see anything. You would be defeating the purpose. I would need to bleach my brows even just five minutes and then deposit um, a light brown. Now, step number two is to intensify the result of a tint especially with pastels, reds, and purple looks. So as I had mentioned before, and you can see in the diagram as well, in the models, the before and after pictures, especially in the red part, if you look at the red, her brows are the last model. Her brows are very, very dark. Now, if you were to take the red tint and put it on those dark brows and leave it for 10 minutes, because red tints, you must leave a little longer to develop, they just red to take longer, you would see nothing. What you would see is a ring around the whole brow that looks redder because it's more on the skin, but the hairs are having grasped the color. So you would need to bleach. Now you can choose the bleaching uh, level or by looking at their hair. The red color that's in the um, slide is a very subtle red. But there are some people who the reds they use are almost like, I always use Ariel from The Little Mermaid, the example of her hair. Her hair is a very, very, very bright red, a crisp red. Um, and some people do have that red. You will need to leave 
the tint on longer, but you would also need to bleach longer. The longer you leave the bleach on, so if you go up to the level number three, the crisper the red color would look, the more brighter the red color would look. Make sense to everybody? So if you had left it only to a level number one for five minutes, the red would be not dull, but it wouldn't just, it wouldn't be that brighter red. It gets brighter as you leave it to level two or even brighter when you leave it to level three, the bleaching paste, okay? <clears throat> also your pastel colors, uh, we have, which you'll see in the next slides, you can, uh, if somebody comes in with the cotton candy pink hair or the blues or the purples, in order to have the intensity of those purples and cotton candy pink brows, you would have to leave the ble ble bleaching paste longer in order that it's a brighter pastel, okay? So hopefully that makes sense to everybody. Once again, if you have questions, drop them into your comment box and then we'll, I'll answer them along the way, okay? So the next slide here, tip. Application time of a tint after blonde brow is only two to five minutes. So this is when you're going to deposit a tint into the hairs after you have bleached it. Now, when you've stripped away the color, the hair is naked. It's freshly opened, it will grasp the color that instantly quick. So you don't have to leave it longer. Sometimes even just one minute leaving the tint on the hair, it's grasped because of bleaching it. So you, this is where it comes to you consulting with your customer and seeing what do they desire? What look do they desire? Do they want uh, the tint more intensified? Do they not? Because that varies your your tinting timing. Make sense? So if you were to leave the tint on uh, more than one minute, it might be too dark for the customer because you stripped away the, the, the color from the, from the brows that the pigments grasp more. So always ask your customer what they're, what they're desiring. Darker, lighter, medium brows, your timing will, will vary that. But after one minute, the, the color grasps just like that. And it mentions there, the hair shaft is open, takes on the color very quickly. Downside, because the application time is only two to five minutes, the tints only last four weeks. So you're not, even though it grasps onto the hair color, onto the hair shaft, the, the length of it won't last as long because usually you leave it on the brows. You can leave the tint on the brows for 10 minutes. But if you were to do that in this case, the brows would be jet dark and that will scare the customer away. So the, only, the downside size is not up to six weeks, four weeks that they'll have a tint last for them, which still is pretty awesome having four weeks of not having to fill in your brows, not having to spend too much time on shaping them because they look presentable already. Okay. <clears throat> Next slide. These slides here are showing you what I had um, mentioned before, and we do have this beautiful booklet called a color trend uh, booklet that has these looks, how you can mix your tints and become like custom make them and what are the ratios, what are the timings. So here is a perfect example of the colors I was telling you about the red. Her hair is that aerial mermaid red, red, red hair. Her brows prior to this were black. As I mentioned before, you would not achieve that beautiful crisp red on her brows if you had just put the red tint over them. You can't lift black brows. So what they did here is they left the bleaching paste for up to 20 minutes. Remember, cutoff time is 20 minutes. They left it on there for 10 minute, 20 minutes, and then they deposited the red for 10 minutes. Now, here be careful. You can leave the red in for 10 minutes because it takes longer to to uh, lift the red, but be careful. After five minutes, I would actually take two to, two to five, three to five minutes, sorry, I would take a Q-tip, wipe off the corner of the brow and just see how pigmented the red had turned because sometimes you don't really need that 10 minutes, especially since you have bleached it before, okay? So always check and then if it's not uh, fully reach the potential of the color that you want, you apply the, the tip back on there again and you leave it for the rest of the timing that you want, okay? So these are just the looks that we're going to show you. The next one is beautiful as well, is the, um, sorry, we're going to get it perfect. It's the purples. 
beautiful, beautiful hair color. It's very popular. People are loving these pastel colors. And look how nicely together the brows look. Like they give that complete look with the hair. Not too intense purple, almost like a black purple, but looks really beautiful with her hair. What would you have to do in this case? Well, you would have to bleach first. And this is where I had mentioned that your bleaching varies to the intensity of the brightness of that pastel color that the customer wants. So you can leave for only five minutes of blonde paste. The brows might have a more darker purple, okay? Or you can leave it to a 12 minutes, level number two, and the brows will have a medium brighter purple. Or you can leave it to level number three, which is 20 minutes, where the purple will stand out on the brow. As we can see in the model in this picture, you can see the hue, the purple, but still looks very uh, subtle. It's not, it's not bright purple just like her hair, okay? So that, that's where you know how when you leave the blonde paste on longer than, when you leave it up to 20 minutes, you'll get a crisper look of the colors. And in here, they mixed the blue and the, and the red. So they use the uh, one, and you see the mixing ratios, one to 0.5 uh, centimeters. So basically you're putting uh, your full, like your 1.5 uh, centimeters of your red and then 0.5 centimeters of your blue. You don't really need that much of the blue. It's just, uh, it's majority of your red color that's used in there. And then you create your purple look. Now, I know in the past, like if I've done this with students, sometimes the red showed more as opposed to purple. So right away in the mixing bowl, I got them to add a little bit of more of the blue to offset the red, add in a couple of drops. As you, Once you know your ratios, your standard ratios, you can start doing this way of mixing it and then apply it back onto the brow so they don't look as red and they start turning purple, okay? So as I mentioned in the beginning of this webinar, estheticians are gonna, it's gonna be a trial and test for them if they're not hairdressers because hairdressers do know how to mix colors and this comes more easier to them. Uh, esthetician will need to play around a little bit and then with the colors, understanding the ratios, understanding how to get that color fixed if it what didn't turn out the proper color. But once I deposit that little bit more blue, with the oxidant and put it on the brows, the purple started to come out, okay? Any questions so far with these creative looks? We have the last, how oh. long do the tints last when open? Uh, the tubes of tints, okay, the question I, that I was just asked is how long do the tubes of tints last after they've been opened? So on the tubes you have a little marking, which you most likely won't see them on the um, camera, probably not, but it says right there, Oh, maybe right here. No, 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 right there. <laughs> it says 12 months after opening. They have that little um, diagram on the right-hand corner there, top right-hand corner. Um, it's 12 months after opening. Okay, so be aware of that too. If your 12-month timing has come up, and always close your caps right away. I see people who just leave them open like that. It's oxidizing, okay? So when you take that first part out and put it in and start using it, it's already been oxidized that they're not gonna achieve the proper results. So I always say, if you're gonna leave them open and then you close it after half an hour after the treatment's over, that first section, that first one centimeter, chop it off, throw it away. Start fresh, because it's been oxidized, but always close them before you start the service, after you put in your mix, we'll close them, put them aside. But 12 months after opening, you like to change them up, okay? And then the last, oh, there's the blue shades as well. Here are these, uh, sorry, change well. So once again, it's showing the blue color. So you need to add the graph. A lot of people, this Kid, do we have another question? Yes. We okay, do. we have another question. So the same thing you can do with the graphite, you can cool down this blue. Okay. So we have another question. Which developer is better, gel or liquid? Okay. So the question is, which developer is better, gel or liquid? So we have cream. We don't call it gel. So it's cream or liquid. They both do the exact same thing, meaning that they're both three percent ten volume, which is the safest amount for your hairs on your face. It's preference wise when it comes to the texture. I like cream 
because it is thicker for me and I do a lot of demos at trade shows with a person sitting up. So when it's on their brows and it's a little bit thicker consistency, it stays on properly. I don't have to worry about dripping or staining their clothes. Now, on the other hand, when you are doing the blonde brow, you can only use cream oxidant. So that might be something you will have to be like, well, you know what, I'm going to carry cream oxidant because I can now use it for all my colors and then also for my blonde brow. So you can't use liquid with the blonde brow. It has to be cream. Okay? Does that answer, hopefully that answers your question? Uh, keep throwing, keep, keep giving me questions. I'm more than willing to answer everything, okay? Uh, so there's the example of the cool blue shades. You leave on the blonde brow, as I mentioned, the longer you leave it, the more brighter the color is. Here you're mixing, same as the red, 1.5 centimeters of the, of the blue and then 0.5 of the graphite, okay? <clears throat> and then the last one, which is this cotton candy pink hair and how beautiful the brows are. Uh, match it like it looks beautiful can you imagine having black brows on there and this hair color the contrast contrast will be too stark could be too harsh could make the person look washed out look how beautiful just a little bit of that hue of the pink that's coming out in her brows accommodates that whole look as i mentioned it's my favorite look i love it a lot um and what's happening with this one is they're bleaching it once again um and it, they're mixing your color number red uh, number four, sorry, red with your blue. But you see the blue is 0.2. So it's it's a pin size amount that you're using, a little bit bigger than a pin size amount that you're putting into your into your red. So not that much, okay? Or else the brows, the brows might look a little bit darker and more to the purple, okay? So in order to look more to the rosy pink, you're only using that 0.2 centimeters or as I say, a little bit more than a pin size amount to your uh, full uh, almost two centimeters tints of the red. Okay, so this, do these little charts of the little uh, the slides of the little ratios and how long to leave your blonde brow make sense? Because look how much more you can accommodate. Look how much more clients you can bring in. Uh, do you know what I mean? Like how more? It's not the standard brown and the standard blacks that you're using. You're now being versatile and using all the colors uh, and bringing in all the colors and able to cater to people who are want to come in with these looks. Many people might not know that an, uh, a spa is offering these kind of services and that is why they go to the salon and that is why the salon is using whatever hair dye is in their bowl, which we're trying to get away from that. So now estheticians can be educated on how to use this method and using the blonde brow. Okay, so far so good. Any, if I'm speaking fast too, let me know. I can a little breather or I can repeat something if you didn't uh, grasp it the first time but if everybody so far is good or if it has any if you have any questions let me know oh we might have one you say you used to have, I used to play the liquid and gel um, and then you were having to make some other issues oh sorry okay we're so we're issues where we're cutting out we are we are oh uh, sorry about this uh, I was just informed that we are cutting out a little bit uh let me know during um as i'm speaking if i did cut out i will repeat it again it's better for you guys to grasp to understand what i'm saying so the lady before that that had asked about uh which is better the cream oxidant or the liquid oxidant i had mentioned that it is preference wise of the consistency cream is a little bit more thicker than liquid you also use more drops of the cream to the ratio of the tint and less the liquid. But when it comes to using the blonde brow, you can only use cream, okay? So that becomes a little bit of an, if you're doing the service of the blonde brow, then you're gonna wanna be using cream more often than liquid. Does that help? But otherwise they do the exact same thing. They're both 3%, 10 volume, safest um, level for the hairs on the face and they, your customer will have no irritation on their skin, but it's preference, okay? It's good, did they, if you, if the person who asked this question, if you, if you heard, understood, like heard me this time, just give us a heads up so that my, the person helping me can see that you got it and then. We're cutting in and out. We're still cutting in and out, okay. Okay, I'm sorry about that. I think our connection is a little bit poor in the office today. 
I don't know if it had to do anything with these wins <laughs> that we had on um we have it yeah since Friday we had some really really bad winds people who are not from this area we had some really bad winds which damaged thousands of homes and wires were shut like broke down from the trees and power has been out till now for some people so I believe we we are it's affecting us a little bit as I'm cutting out I'm hearing still we're good we're good so the person the person that asked about the oxen are they good they reply they're good California is good. good oh hello California <laughs> I just want to make sure the people who are asking questions got it. If this will be recorded as well, that we'll send out the links. Uh, but once again, at the end, what I'll have Natasha do is she'll write down my, uh, she'll type down my email, and any questions you have after this webinar, please do not hesitate. Send me questions, okay? So I'm going to proceed because I know we have some demos that we want to show you as well. Uh, but now we're going to the third reason. So we. Did the two reasons, the third reason, to tint gray, white, or bristly brows. So sometimes gray, white brows do not take on the color very well, as I mentioned. This is due to their special structure. So they get very wiry, very coarse. Nothing you do will remove, uh, will depo help deposit a color to that. If they're standard gray hair that are still soft, that just blend in with the hair, with the, with the rest of the hairs, you, our tints will cover it. But as I have a model today, which is my mother, she has those bristly grays that just are out of control, so thick, the color will not grasp, so we have to bleach them, okay? By bleaching them first with the blonde brow, they will be able to take on the color again for even an even and beautiful result. Tip, this use is perhaps the most useful for you as a professional. Only few know that they can do this. Increase customer satisfaction easily. So instead of previously, people would have said, um, I'm sorry, I can't really cover the grays. That's all I can do. No, now you're able to be able to um, cover the gray hair by bleaching first. And always inform your customer that this is a safe method. This is not going to harm, harm them. It's safer for their hairs in their face. And even though it's working so close to the eyes, it's not going to cause any irritation in their eyes because some people are a little bit scared to do this method because it's so close to the eyes but you you give comfort to your customer letting them know that it's safe they will trust you and if you perform a proper service the proper protocols they'll give them a safe result okay so let's see now now we're going to see the application yes i will do it as well when i'm doing the demo but let's look at it the protocols in written form first so we can grasp and see if there's any questions so blonde brow application. Oh, let's give us one second. There we go. Clean the brows with Reflectisil saline solution. Okay, so we suggest saline solution just like we suggest saline solution for, for your um, curl, when you do a lash curl. We suggest using saline solution because it balances out the pH level and it gives you a very, very, very clean canvas, okay? Because you don't want to make any mistakes with the blonde brow. You don't want to miss any hairs, and some hairs are blonde, some didn't strip, some didn't, and you deposit color, and you almost have like a zebra effect. You don't want that, right? So do your, clean your brows first with the saline solution, and then the eye makeup remover. Our eye makeup remover is beautiful. It works as a, just grab it. If you look at the, can you see it? Can you see it? It has, it says in the, right there, lash conditioning, uh, hair conditioning. I think it says lash, yes, lash strengthening. But it's not only for the lash, it strengthens also the hair on your brows. They have a lot of amino acids they put in here that are contributing to hair growth or just providing moisture to the hair. So you're actually giving them care when you're, I think, when you're cleaning the, the lashes or the brows um, or effect of salt, uh, eye makeup remover, okay? So you're going to start off first with your saline solution, and then after that, you're going to wipe off with your um, makeup remover, okay? Then it says, mix approximately three quarters of an inch, or I use centimeters, two centimeters of paste, so of the blonde brow, to 23 to 25 drops of Reflectisil Oxidant Cream. Um, you can actually go 25 to 30, I find sometimes. 
So, so 23 to 25, if you find that the texture feels a little too dry, add those three, three, to, three to five more drops. Um, but do not make it too watery, the consistency. Now, when you start, if you look at the tip, it says when mixing the paste with the oxidant, the texture will be clumpy. That is normal. Even when they do your hair, the hairdresser, and they want to bleach your hair, it's very, very clumpy, and they're working at it to smooth it out. So don't think your product is expired or anything like that. It comes out clumpy, and then when you work at it for a minute to two minutes, it becomes a grainy paste. Then you know you've achieved the proper um, solution, like the proper effect of what the paste should look like, okay? Once again, do not make it too watery, or else you need it to stay on the brows to penetrate into the hair, okay? Too watery, it could start to drip, and especially if your customer's laying back on the bed, you don't want the substance to drip, okay? So 20 to 25 drops could be good, but if you use a little bit more than two centimeters of the blonde paste, add a couple, three to, three to five more drops, okay? Uh, so we got that point down for the mixing ratio. Now is application, okay? Correct application. Paste must cover the hair completely. The first time I did a blonde paste, you feel you got you gotta make sure that you cover all the hairs. Uh, because there was maybe one or two hairs that I didn't cover. And then when I deposit the color, what happens either those areas are darker or lighter, it depending on the color that you use. So it, it contrasts with the rest of the hair. So make sure, or it didn't even grasp. So the hair is still black, and then you have the reds. So it, as I mentioned before, we don't want like a zebra type of effect. So make sure that you cover the hair completely and also go against. Usually when we tint the brows, we, you know, flow with the shapes of the, the way the hair is flowing. Uh, with the bleaching place, you're getting it in there. You're going on the opposite direction of your hair growth and making sure it's saturated in there. I always tell people it looks like two white caterpillars on your brows because your hair is covered with the white paste, okay? As we mentioned, the application time, you saw that chart that showed that three, uh, five minutes is your level number one of lifting, uh, 12 minutes is your level number two, and then 20 minutes is your level number three. Never go past 20 minutes, okay? Remove the bleaching paste with the wet cotton pad after the application time, uh, and then you can clean the brow afterwards with the eye makeup remover. I, I wouldn't suggest a saline solution when you're when you're removing it afterwards because, as I mentioned, our eye makeup remover works as a hair strengthening. It conditions the hair. So after you're done your treatment of your blonde brow, uh, wipe it off with the, the eye, eye makeup remover because you're giving them an aftercare. Okay. And a lot of salons they don't know they don't know that you can do that with you can give them an aftercare after bleaching. Okay. You're